All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are fresh off the previous video, and now we are going to move into talking about uh, Paladin rotation. So somebody wanted in the comment sections, uh, wanted me to do a TLDR on Paladin rotation for AOE, for, for Stamina Intellect Paladin. Um, full disclosure, every time um, a classic Andy hears the term rotation in classic World of Warcraft, uh, we cringe a little and die a little bit inside. Um, rotation is not a thing in, in World of Warcraft because spirit, um, a regeneration is a thing and, um, your mana is basically precious. Um, so just know that I'm going to give you the rotation as best as I can give it to you, but know that rotation is not a thing in classic World of Warcraft because the vast majority of the time you're trying to do, um, when you're taking actions, you're trying to do as much as possible, as quickly as possible, um, that's that's not even true. Uh, there's too much nuance involved here. Um, but generally speaking, all classes when you're leveling are try, especially mana based classes, are trying to do as little as possible so that they can get as much mana um, regeneration from spirit regeneration as possible. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, um, <clears throat> every class, every mana using class in the game has actually yeah that's true. Every mana using class in the game has um, spirit regeneration that happens five seconds after you cast a spell. Okay, so if you cast a spell, you have to wait five seconds before spirit regeneration starts happening, and then afterwards, it's every two seconds you gain mana from spirit um, from spirit ticks. Um, this is why uh, we uh, there's a lot of front loading in classic World of Warcraft. What front loading means is that when we're casting spells, we're going to cast all the spells, and then when when we're done casting all the spells, we're going to sit back and do f all. Um, for, for, for as long as possible, literally, we don't want to cast any more spells if at all possible, uh, for the remainder of a fight, because we want as much spirit regeneration as possible. So for example, uh, a shaman, that would be, we pull with a lightning bolt and then we earth shock and then we go melee them until they die. Um, just to get as much uh, spirit, no more spell casting, even though we can spell cast, no more spell casting. Um, just so we get as much spirit tick regeneration as possible. This is actually key. Um, to playing uh, many a mana class uh, correctly, with the sole exception being mage. <laughs> Lol. Um, priests are notorious for doing this too. All right, so let's cover the, the rotation first, and I got some video imagery to, to cover it real fast. So this is your uh, prior to level 41 um, AoE um, tanking uh, rotation, and then this is what life looks like uh, past level uh, 41 when you're getting your, your AoE farm on, right? All right, cool. Let's, let's look at this for a second. And then this, of course, is the timeline of events. And you can see that we have... Let me get my thingy here. Boom. Okay, cool. Uh, you can see that we're front-loading every single spell and its dog at the beginning. And then at the end here, then there's a long stretch of time where we're doing nothing. And then we only judge when um, we're about to kill the target because we have to get rid of the seal in order to reseal Crusader to start the rotation all over again. Uh, so we might as well uh, uh, get the damage um, in, if that makes sense. But all this dead dead zone right here is spirit tick, spirit regeneration. And that's the key, okay? That's the key to the rotation. That's why number two here says dead time for spirit ticks, about 20 seconds. All right, so basically what you're doing is... <clears throat> MR here stands for max rank. Um, R3 sounds for, stands for rank 3, and R1 stands for rank 1. You're not using max rank consecrations, um, usually while you're leveling using rank 1 consecrations, because all the ranks of consecration have the exact same spell power ratio. You can mess with it a bit, but usually you'll find that it's more mana and time efficient for you to be using rank 1s as opposed to rank 2s. Um, you'll get rank 3 at level 40, and from there you're like one level away from AoE tanking, and then it's just max rank um, pretty much all the way down. Alright, so you start off with max rank Crusader. Uh, draw your eyes up here. Um, you start off with uh, max rank Crusader, which is this one. Ugh, I don't like that anymore. Okay, so you... Uh, damn it, go away. Alright, start off with max rank Crusader, and then uh, you'll approach the mob, and you'll judge Max Rank Crusader into them. You'll immediately seal Rank 3 seal uh, of, of Righteousness, um, because there's no GCD on your judgment. So you can even uh, um, have a macro that will it'll do these two things simultaneously. Um, and uh, But nobody does that, because that, that would be weird. Just just click an extra button. Relax. We don't have enough buttons to click, so feel free to click another one. 
Um, and then you're immediately, as soon as the GCD ends from resealing uh, into rank three, you're using rank one uh, seal uh, consecration. And then you're not doing anything until you're just auto attack ending away until the mob is about to die and you you feel like uh, a single judgment um, uh, judging into the target will, will kill the target. And that's why it looks like it, as it does down here. All right. Now, there's another way to do this where you do a double consecration and a judgment. And the double consecration will will, will happen like in, in this area. You, you want to do it um, pretty much as quickly as possible. These two things line up uh, pretty nicely. Basically, um, when you can both judge the target, uh, uh, damage on the target, and you can uh, put down another rank one consecration, uh, you do it. And then you reseal rank three. And then you sit there and you wait and, and, until the mob dies. Um, and or you judge. So there, theoretically, there's more stuff you can do here. Um, I'll, I'll showcase that in a second. Um, I don't have any uh, showcase for what this looks like. Um, this one is far more nuanced as a rotation. Um, it just is. Um, and so it's hard to show. It's easier to talk about it. So I'm going to talk about it, then I'm going to go show the other example. All right, so let's talk about it first. When you're AoE tanking, you're usually running around looking like a dumbass. Um, using rank one consecration to try to gather up a, a, a small pack of mobs, right? Um, as I talked about in the previous video, uh, just be careful which mobs you're pulling. No, don't just pull any random mobs. Make sure they meet certain criteria of, oh, they're, they're going to melee attack me and they don't have any really scary abilities that I need to worry about. Like they're not going to kick me while I'm healing and school lock me kind of a thing, right? Um, anyways, you gather up your pack of mobs. Uh, you always have, uh, you have a seal of wisdom sealed, then you judge seal of wisdom, then you re a seal of wisdom, and then you put down a max rank consecration. From there, it's max rank consecrations, um, all the way, all the way down until everything dies, um, re-sealing and re-judging as, as needed. So usually what that'll look like is, let's say there's four mobs, right? You judge wisdom on one mob. Um, then you reseal wisdom. So you got a double wisdom going on with your knightly longsword. Then you're putting down max rank consecrations. Uh, you then stay on that mob until either one of two things happens. Either the mob dies, in which case you move on to the next mob and you repeat, uh, the process of judging wisdom on there and resealing wisdom, or, um, your current seal is about to fall off meaning that the mob is still alive. You've been beating on it with a knightly longsword uh, with um, uh, a seal of wisdom, um, but you can see that your seal of wisdom is going to fall off in like a second or so. Well, you tab target over to another mob. Just click tab. Um, you tab over to another mob. You judge a seal of wisdom on it, and then you re seal of wisdom, and then you just don't bother with, with the mob, that, uh, killing the mob that you were attacking before. Your goal is to always, always, always make sure that you are attacking a mob that, uh, when you both have Seal of Wisdom on your weapon and you have Judgment of Wisdom on the mob. And you want the mob to be as healthy as possible. Um, where it starts getting nuanced is um, at a certain point, it's not worth it to rejudge and reseal anymore. Um, and uh, because everything's about to die, everything's like 10, 20 seconds away from dying, why bother? Um, usually it's not even worth it, uh, sometimes even max rank consecration anymore. So you just throw down a, a rank one consecration and then when everything dies, you drink water. So there's a bit of nuance at the end, but there's no nuance to this whatsoever at the beginning. It's, you just pretend like all the only seal you have in the entire world is seal of wisdom. And the only rank of consecration you have in the entire world is, um, rank, um, max rank, con uh, consecration seal, whatever. Only spell other spells, max rank consecration. Um, Talk about bops and bubbles. Um, it is not uncommon for us paladins to pull a pack of mobs knowing full well that we are going to bubble um, uh, on this pack of mobs or we are going to bop on this pack of mobs. So we'll bubble, heal, um, bop, heal, bop, bandage, bubble, bandage, like, like you know, that, that sort of thing going on. Not uncommon for us to do that. Um, not super advisable in hardcore, but, you know, if you feel comfortable enough doing it, you, uh, you got a lot of experience, go ahead and do it. Uh, the only other thing to note about the AoE tanking, I think, is there's something. I can't remember what the hell it is. I just had it on the top of my head. The reason why I don't mind you bopping and bubbling and, and, and using them when you pull a pack of mobs is because, in theory, you've got um, 
mana potions. I remember what I was going to talk about now. You got mana potions and major, major recombobulator ray and uh, goblin mortar in reserve. Damn it. That's one thing I forgot to mention about the trinkets about goblin mortar. Um, hopefully you guys are watching these videos back to back. Um, goblin mortar has a small chance to backfire and to kill you. Okay, while you are reloading the thing, it's quite famous for doing that. But the 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 death thing is it, it does like a uh, a thousand or like two thousand fire damage to you and like knocks you in the air or something like that. Um, it's very dangerous to reload for um, classes who are not paladin. For paladin, it's not a problem because we literally just bubble and reload the thing. It's like a ten second uh, um, time to reload um, a goblin mortar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but our bubble lasts like 12 seconds, so you can see where we're going here, right? I've never even seen it backfire on me. All I've ever done is I'll, I'll activate bubble and then goblin mortar, and then, you know, it just it just completes itself, and I never even see the backfire. Um, other classes, kind of dangerous to, um, uh, to reload mortars. You'll probably even have people running up to you asking them to reload your their mortar for them. Uh, because you are a paladin and you can bubble and reload the mortar safely. And we will, we're going to be like goblin mortar reloading bitches in classic WoW hardcore. All right. So that's already a thing. Hopefully you know that. But I feel comfortable sending you out with this little information about AoE tanking because, or the bubble and the, and the bopping, because in theory you've got major recombobulator ray as backup. You've got goblin mortar as backup and you have a, a mana potion as backup. There's no effing way you should be dying. So feel free to use your bop and your bubble while you're, you know, yada yada uh, aoe farming um or play it safe and only pull like three mobs at a time uh what the hell else is there to talk about right um if you're not doing the bop or the bubble thing you don't feel comfortable with that uh the next best thing to do is just to face tank all the damage and to heal like literally you, you don't swap to concentration aura it's not I'm in ret aura for the reflect damage. I need to heal. I swap to concentration aura, heal, then I swap back into ret. That is not a thing that, that, that you really want to do unless you desperately need to. Um, literally, you just start healing yourself. Uh, and you just suffer the 30% the, the pushback chance. And you don't care if it takes you a million years to get this heal off because you healed with plenty of time. Um, yeah, just, just don't even bother. It's, it's not worth the loss and damage and the loss in time. Like all, all I, I know I could be wrong about this. Feel free to experiment with switching. In theory, you get more mana back when you switch the auras, but you also kind of waste time and damage when you switch the auras. You just, just ugh. do, do whatever floats your boat. Switch your auras, don't switch your auras. It really doesn't matter. Okay. This video is getting kind of long. So let me go show you guys some examples of this that I have pulled up. Um, this is going to be our first example and I'm going to be a little quiet, um, while we're watching this video. Uh, but if you want to see some examples, uh, uh, two that, uh, int stamina level deniers is literally, I cover it all in this video. So let's just press play. You can see my major recombobulator ray down here, my goblin mortar trinket, my, um, mana potions, and we are good to go. All right. We're going to press play. Hmm? But yeah, look, health and mana still staying stupidly high. Come here. So much so I can't keep up Judge with the judgments half the time. Yeah, there we go. All right, yeah, we're just gonna chill. We're not gonna do anything. Um, we get uh, 23 mana. I think it's like 25. Yeah, about 25 mana a tick. And then of course we have like you know the MP5 is going, but that's always going. All right, cool. All right, cool. So you saw that. So that was the the one concentration rotation. You'll notice there was a bunch of front loading at the start. And then um, I did absolutely nothing to let my spirit tick uh, regeneration happen. I even talked about it, and then I judged at the end when it would kill them, and we are moving on. You judge at the end because you start off this rotation with Seal of the Crusader. So in theory, we'd be, we're moving on to the next mob right now. We're see, we're gonna seal uh, up Crusader, but how, right now we're how am I supposed to get ganked here? Happen, right? Okay, cool. Um, let me show you the the double one. Uh, this is the much faster one. Um, yeah, let's, let's let's turn off the sound real quick here. All right, so we seal Crusader, Judge Crusader, SOR, hit the target. We'll go, down goes one Consecration. We still hit the target. Uh, we're going to be judging and consecrating again uh, when it becomes available. So you can see right now I can consecrate again, but can I judge again? Yeah, I can also judge again. This rotation um, has it in such a way that they come off a of cooldown almost identically. You can see right, right down here and right here, they both come off cooldown. And so it's go time again. So there'll probably be like a consecration and a judge or, or a judge and a consecration. Probably consecration, judge, reseal. It's probably what's about to happen. 
No, we judge, we resealed, we consecrate, and now we're letting spirit uh, tick happen. Um, this is a little bit more mana intensive, but you get much faster kill times. So for example, this was a, a 20 second kill time on a an equal level mob. Um, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, uh, even for 200 paladins. Um, if you are killing mobs in under 30 seconds, one, one, one mob in under 30 seconds is a paladin, you're doing good. Anything o o under 25 seconds, you're doing great. Um, 20 seconds or below, you're a god. So a 20 second kill on an equal level mob is absolutely insane. All right, are we clear on that? Cool. So that's what your two rotations look like, single target, and then um, you can start this early on. You can start this as early as level 20 because that's when you get uh, Consecration. Then at level 30, um, 41, you switch over to your AoE thing because that's when you have um, Blessing of Sanctuary and a Consecration at the same time, and that's when stuff really starts kicking off. So anyways, I'm going to end the video here, and uh, Deus Vault, boys.